Results, we know that part of the Marriott Hotel next to the World Trade Center also collapsed as a result of this huge amount of falling debris from 110 floors of two, the two twin towers of the World Trade Center. As you can see behind me, the uh, Trade Center is... Well, there's going to be seven standing so that's live. Now, of course, uh, BBC uh, apologizes for this terrible mistake, citing the confusing events of the day. Does that make them psychic, though? I don't think so. It looks like we're talking about a hazardous strip, and it just came out too soon. This is a theater project on behalf of some very, very powerful people who want us to not understand that um, what was really going on. Now, who was in this building? The CIA, the IRS, the Department of Defense, Giuliani's Office of Emergency Management, the SEC, as we mentioned. You have to ask yourself a key question. Could our data have gotten access to this building to set these charges? Extremely doubtful. This makes Al-Qaeda irrelevant uh, relative to 9-11. We have scientific evidence that is to say, lots of scientific evidence that supports the hypothesis, therefore, of controlled demolition, including direct evidence of explosives, sounds for, including sounds produced by explosives, a rapid onset of destruction at the base, dust clouds thick, billowing and enormous from the pulverized concrete and pyroplastic clouds, evidence of cutter charges, which we will get to, squibs, those explosive cutter charges visible at the upper floors, Demolition waves removing the column support, resulting in a total collapse of the steel skeleton where it is broken up and ready for shipment. And all of this producing a straight down symmetrical collapse into its own footprint at free fall speed. This building then shows no characteristics of destruction by fire. In fact, fire can't account for any one of these characteristics, let alone all 10. We have government documentation, expert corroboration, foreknowledge of the collapse, of course, as we noted in plenty of video documentation. Now, no building exhibiting all these characteristics of controlled demolition has ever not been a controlled demolition, okay? So, as difficult as that evidence is to, come to, to, uh, to swallow, uh, it's even greater, unfortunately, in the case of the Twin Towers, which I would like to go into now. <coughs> Now, some of you may have loved the Twin Towers. Uh, some call it the crowning achievement of the international style. Uh, Robert Stern, a uh, famous architect, calls it massive dumbness, right? <laughs> Two just big, tall rectangles. Uh, but uh, others say John Skelling, uh, his structural engineering innovations, along with Leslie Robertson, helped the architect, Minoru Yamasaki, preserve these sim his simple sculptural purity, which was fairly characteristic of of his style. Um, no matter how you feel, uh, the, the buildings were uh, completed in 76 and eclipsed. The more elegantly designed Empire State Building to the chagrin of, of many. Now, the, but the structural innovations assisted the, the architect in, in, in having this open office plan, 60 foot from the core of where the elevators are to the perimeter and 35 foot. Uh, I'll show you why that's so important. So what we have is a 208 foot square. These are, each of these floors is an acre. Compare that to, to, to the land on which you, you live on. Uh, uh, so you can see, imagine just how huge these buildings are. Uh, but right away, they had difficulty renting office space with these uh, gun slit windows and fairly low ceilings. Uh, and finally, Governor Rockefeller forced his uh, state employees into the building, 20,000 of them, and it saved it financially, uh, but bankrupted uh, other the, the, uh, spots where they were because they remained empty. Uh, anyway, 10 million square feet of unwanted space. Uh, it took uh, two decades, uh, actually, to approach full occupancy. It was a financial disaster. Not only that, it required 200 million for asbestos removal uh, very quickly uh, as these laws came into being. The city was requiring uh, the removal of asbestos. In fact, the, the Port Authority applied for demolition permits on several occasions and were denied because of the asbestos on every, on every occasion. Uh, 800 million was required for electrical communication and cooling systems and galvanic corrosion 
uh, was a problem between the structural system and the aluminum cladding around the exterior. So uh, if all of that is true, uh, and it took 5.6 to, to 15 billion to uh, correct, uh, why would it be transferring into private uh, control just three months prior to 9-11? Uh, wherein uh, Larry Silverstein, Silverstein Properties, properties led a group, um, including uh, Frank Lowy's Westfield America, to purchase it for 3.2 billion in his 99 year lease. Uh, investing, I think it's actually 125 million of his own money. Uh, so why, 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 knowing that it would take up to 15 billion to, to rebuild it, it wasn't a financial uh, income producer. Did he know that his no cost demolition would be coming in just three months? Well, he purchased a set of insurance that is extremely unusual, even for Twin Towers. This lease has an all-important escape clause that the building is struck by an act of terrorism. The new owner's obligations under this lease are void, meaning no payments, but you get to collect all the money. That is unheard of. <clears throat> now, you might feel sorry for the insurance companies or feel like, well, surely they would have done an investigation. They didn't want to pay for these things. They came out like, like uh, really good. They raised their premiums by over 2,000% in some cases. And, uh, and, and they were happy to make these payments. So let's take a look at the World Trade Center uh, structural uh, engineering. <laughs> this is a video I'm going to make it flat. This video is never not playing. It's like a fire room down. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the Twin Towers were built as a, a tube structure with this uh, very dense mesh of steel surrounding the exterior and acting as a bearing wall. Prior to this, these high rises were built with a very dense grid, like 20 foot, and every 20 feet there's a column. So it won an award uh, upon its completion in, uh, in 1976 by the American Society of Civil Engineers. Uh, because of, of, of this incredible engineering, inside was a core, a dense grid of 47 minutes, steel box columns, four inch thick at the base, two inch thick at mid height, prefabricated floor assemblies with a 20 gauge decking, over 29 inch deep steel web joists were topped with four inch thick concrete reinforced, uh, steel reinforced concrete floor. Now, we'll be looking for those floors at the bottom of the Twin Towers when we get to its collapse. These trusses, of course, which you see in this photo, um, were 29 inches deep, and they were bolted uh, with two 5 8 five eight inch bolts at the perimeter and also at the core column. And so what we have here is a 100,000 ton heat sink. Uh, any 1,800 degree fire has NIST flames, and you'll see there's no evidence for such fires uh, in the World Trade Center of that, of that uh, of temperature would be dissipated just like the other uh, steel frame hot skyscrapers that I showed you earlier throughout the structure. It is not a hollow steel shaft as the 9-11 Commission describes it. In fact, let's take a look in a minute how they do describe it. But these core, uh, core columns at their corners were 52 inches by 22 inches and almost solid steel. And, and and in between those, uh, 30 inches by 16 inches. Uh, four inch thick at the base, two inch thick at the and then thinning up, to, up, up higher. These perimeter columns are 14 inches square, and you can see why they call this an exoskeleton system. It's actually a barren deal truss where you have a welded series of horizontal and vertical components. That's why the building is over designed by a factor of 20 uh, in terms of its lateral resisting of its perimeter structure. The core structure is over-designed by a factor of five. And all the perimeter and cores were tied together at the top with this hat truss, which ties them together and helps transfer some of those uh, uh, wind loads. Let's take a look and see what the structural imperative was. John Skilling and Les Robertson were the structural engineers who designed the streamlined steel frames of the Twin Towers in the 1960s. 
because a labor army bomber flew into the Empire State Building in 1945 